and welcome back to part two of this video or the series or whatever and we're just reading the Sabasawa Sutta, the discourse of, oh, whoa, did you hear that little kitty? I think she wants some attention, but we're not going to give it to her just yet because we're reading the Dhamma and we're reading about the Sabasawa Sutta, the discourse on all of the Asawas. And make sure you check out video, uh, the part one to this video, which is going to be below. And if you check that one out, then you can come back to here, uh, to this video, and then you will know what we are studying. And so, with that, we're going to be continuing on reading about the asawas that should be removed through restraint. And in the last video, we just ended off with the asawas that should be removed through vision, but not the vision of the eye, the physical eye, and not the vision of the divine eye, but the, but the eye of the Aryas, the noble ones, the one who has seen the truth for themselves. And that means an enlightened being, um, of which there are the Buddha, then there are Pachika Buddhas, and then there are, and Pachika Buddhas is the private Buddha, and then there are the four um, uh, classes of enlightened beings, which is uh, number one, we should take like like maybe like this, like a Suttapana and a Sakyatagami and an Anagami and an Arahant. And this one would be a fully enlightened being. And so, also, I forgot to do the intro on on the first video, and so we're going to do that one now. Namo tassa pakawato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, and the Rightly Self-Awakened One, the Gautama Buddha, our Blessed Present Buddha. Um, 2,500 and what is it, 56, 57 years ago, where the Bodhisattva was born. So, continuing on with part two. Asawas that should be removed through restraint. And bhikkhus. What are the asawas that should be removed through restraint? Let's see what the footnote says. Restraint of the sense faculties, samwara, the prevention through mindfulness of the arising asawas. Wow, that sounds awesome. Bhikkhus, in this teaching, the bhikkhu reflecting probably, properly, Reflecting properly, abides in the restraint of his faculty of sight. Asawas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not abide in the restraint of his faculty of sight with proper reflection. And there was footnote 24. And that says sasana. Ooh. And that means the teaching. The sasana. And we today we still have the Buddha Sasana um, and that means that the doors to the deathless or the opportunity of becoming enlightened is still around for a little while and so the Buddha Sasana is alive Sasana teaching uh, which is the Dhamma the Dhamma is still accessible. Asawas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not... Oh, okay, so I just read that. 
In those asuvas, an other destructive and burning defilement does not arise in the bhikkhu who abides in the restraint of his faculty of sight. With proper reflection, reflecting properly, the bhikkhu abides in the restraint of his faculty of hearing, abides in the restraint of his faculty of smell, abides in the restraint of his faculty of taste, abides in the restraint of his faculty of touch, abides in the restraint of uh, abides in the restraint of his faculty of thought. And that was a footnote number twenty five. Let's see what it says. Faculty of sight. Eye faculty. And then all the way through the six senses. Ending with thought. But this, what I'm reading right now, it just says faculty of sight, eye faculty, so with the other sense faculty. Okay. And Asawas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who, who does not abide in the restraint of his faculty of thought with proper reflection. Those asawas, who, those asawas and other destructive and burning defilements does not arise in the bhikkhu who abides in the restraint of his faculty of thought with proper reflection. And bhikkhus, asawas, and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not abide in the restraint of his faculties with proper reflection. Those asawas and other destructive and burning defilements does not arise in the bhikkhu who abides in the restraint of his faculties with proper reflection. And bhikkhus, these are called the asawas that are to be removed through restraint. So we have now we have asawas that are removed through vision and asawas that are removed through restraint. And now continuing on. Asawas, which is the Pali word for fermentations. Or defilements. Asawas that should be removed through proper use of requisites. So this is removing through using. In other words. Okay. And. Number 23. Because what are the asawas that are to be removed through proper use? And then that's footnote number 26. Proper use, using four requisites of a bhikkhu with due reflection. What is taught here is the mode of using four requisites in such a manner that the arising of the asawas is inhibited. So this is using... Uh, the requisites for the purpose of inhibiting the arising of already arisen asawas and asawas that has not yet arisen through using. And this is important, like using your mind. That's very important for any attentive arya. arya. Because in this teaching, the bhikkhus wear, wears the robe. I'm sorry. Because in this teaching, the bhikkhus wears the robes reflecting properly. He wears the robes only for protection from cold, heat, gadflies, mosquitoes, wind, heat of the sun, and snakes, scorpions, and lice, and just to cover up his nakedness. Reflecting properly, he takes alms food. He does not. He does so not for enjoyment, not for vanity, not for improvement of the body, and not for better complexion, 
but only to sustain the physical body, to have just enough nourishment for maintaining life to appease hunger and to carry out the noble practice of purity. He reflects thus, or she, by this alms food, I shall remove the existing discomfort and shall prevent the arising of new discomfort. I shall, I shall have just enough nourishment to maintain life and to lead a blameless life with good health. And we have two footnotes, number 27 and number 28. I'm really into footnotes. Okay, so number 27 says existing discomfort, such as hunger, and new discomfort, uh, discomfort from immoderate eating. And returning to the text. Urges eating but asawas that should be removed through use, through using. Reflecting properly, he <coughs> reflecting properly, he makes use of his monastic living place. He does so only for protection from cold, heat, gadflies and mosquitoes, wind, heat of the sun snakes, scorpions and lice, and inclement weather. I don't know that word, but I'd imagine that inclement means maybe stormy weather. And for the purpose of solitary seclusion, I'm gonna be learning what does inclement mean. Inclement. Hmm. So it means of the weather elements, severe, rough, or harsh, stormy. So I pretty much got that all right. Continuing. Reflecting properly, he makes use of medicines and medicinal requisites for curing illness. He uses them only to remove oppressive ailments that arise and only to be completely free from further ailment. So he uses medicines and medicinal requisites for curing illness. So he removes oppressive ailments. Says, oh, I'm sorry, oppressive ailments. And to be free from further ailment by using the medicines. But my chair just switched. Bhikkhus, aswas, and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not use the four requis requisites with proper reflection. Those aswas and other destructive and burning elements do not arise in the bhikkhu who makes use of the four requisites with proper reflection. Bhikkhus, these are called the asawas that, that are to be removed through proper use. And continuing on with the asawas that should be removed through forbearance. Number 24. Bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, what are the asawas that are to be removed through forbearance and for me I have like I'm gonna have to like forbear when I cannot pronounce the words and I don't know what means inclement and so I'm gonna have to forbear with my own ignorance in the language in the English language Forbearance is an awesome quality to remove our souls. B. 
bhikkhus. This teaching, the bhikkhu reflecting properly, can endure cold, heat, hunger, thirst, gadflies, mosquitoes, wind, heat of the sun, snakes, scorpions, and lice. He can endure ill-spoken and unwholesome words. He has the nature of being able to endure severe, cruel, excruciatingly sharp, disagreeable, unpleasant, deadly and painful sensations which arise in the body. Ambicus, asoas, asoas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu, who cannot... In I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to lift the cat out. Just a second. I'm going to pause this video. Okay, so we're back. And I hope the cat won't make any sounds. Because she just got a little bit of attention. And so, continuing on with the, the asawas, it should be removed through forbearance. Bhikkhus, asawas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu, who does not endure such painful sensations. Those asawas and other destructive and burning defilements do not arise in the bhikkhu, who endures such painful sensations with proper reflection. Bhikkhus, these are called the fire. These are called the asawas that are removed through forbearance. And continuing on, asawas that should be removed through avoidance. Number 25. Bhikkhus, what are the asawas that are to be removed through avoidance? Bhikkhus, in this teaching, the bhikkhu reflecting properly avoids avoids a fierce elephant, a fierce horse, a fierce ox, a fierce dog, a fierce cat, a fierce snake, a, fierce, a tree stump, a thorny place, an abyss, a precipice. Precipice. I don't know what means precipice. Precipice. Points where danger, trouble, or difficulty begins. Like a steep side of a mountain. Okay, okay, I can see a picture. So a precipice. An abyss, a precipice, a refuse pit, and a cesspool. Refuse pit and a cesspool. If a bhikkhu dwells in such an improper place, resorts to such improper resort, and keeps company with evil friends, his wives and fellow bhikkhus would suspect him of involving himself in evil circumstances. Reflecting properly, he avoids improper places, improper resorts, and evil friends through avoidance. <laughs> I'm gonna avoid this little kitty taking up our attention. You put her down on the ground. And okay, so a little bit distracted by the kitty should avoid happening in the future. Maybe we should let her outside. Okay, back to the text. Bhikkhus, asuas, and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not avoid such impro impro improprieties with proper reflection. Those asuas and other destructive burning defilements do not arise in the bhikkhu who avoids such improprieties, improprieties with proper reflection. In bhikkhus, these are called the asuas that are to be removed through avoidance. Asuas that should be removed through reje rejection. 
number 26 because what are the other ones that are to be removed through rejection and there's a footnote number 29 rejection vinodana dispelling with effort such arising thoughts vitakas as kamma vitaka it does not mean total eradication through maka Bhikkhus, in this teaching, the bhikkhu reflecting properly does not tolerate but forsakes, rejects, gets rid of and prevents the repeated arising in him of the arisen sensual thoughts, the arisen thoughts of malice, the arisen thoughts of injuring another, does not tolerate but forsakes, rejects, get rid of and prevents the repeated arising in him of evil and demetorious thoughts whenever they arise. And we have some footnotes from number 30 to 32. And number 30 says, Sensual thoughts in the Pali word, the language of the Buddha, the Kama Vitaka. And 31, thoughts of malice, Vyapara Vitaka. And number 32, thoughts of injuring another, Vihimsa Vitaka. And continuing on, because asawas and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not reject such dematurious thought, dematurious thoughts, with proper reflection, those asawas and other destructive and burning defilements does not arise in the bhikkhu who rejects such dematurious thoughts with proper reflection. Bhikkhus, these are called the asawas that are to be removed through rejection. And finishing off here with the last chapter, the asawas that should be removed through cultivation of the factors of enlightenment. So, removing through cultivation. And bhikkhus, what are the asawas that are to be removed through cultivation? Bhikkhus, in this teaching, the bhikkhu, reflecting properly, cultivates the enlightenment factor of mindfulness that is directed to detachment from defilements freedom from attachment, cessation of defilements, and that promotes and develops the uprooting of defilements and speedy attainment of Nibbana. And we have some footnotes from 33 to 39. Oh, that was wrong. 37. So what do they say? Enlightenment factor of mindfulness, Sati Sambhujanga. Detachment, we we wake up. Number thirty-four and number thirty-five, freedom from attachment, we raga, and number thirty-six, cessation, niroda, and number thirty-seven, wosaka. It just says wosaka. I don't know that word. Anyway, continuing on there. Reflecting properly, he cultivates the enlightenment factor of investigative knowledge of phenomena, cultivates the enlightenment factor of effort, cultivates the enlightenment factor of delightful satisfaction. Uh, cultivates 
the enlightenment factor of serenity cultivates the enlightenment factor of concentration he cultivates the enlightenment factor of equanimity or she that is directed to detachment from defilements freedom from attachment cessation of defilements and that promotes and develops the uprooting of defilements and speedy attainment of nibbana so we have footnotes from 38 to 44 and let's see Dhamma Vichaya Samboyanka. Okay, so these are j just Pali terms for en the enlightenment factors. We can hear those. Virya Sambujanga. Virya means energy or effort. Piti Sambujanga. Piti means joy. Pasati. Pasati Sambujanga. No problem. 41 Pasadi. Let's see. That must, that must be serenity. And Samadhi Sampujanka. Samadhi is concentration. Upeka Sampujanka. Upeka is equanimity. And. Oh, okay. Number 44. This is a long one. The most crucial point in. It's the practice of the four satipatthanas, the four foundations of mindfulness. Body, feelings, thoughts, and dhammas. I mean, roughly put, it is the one and only way for the attainment of makkas and palas, and also for the realization of nibbana. Makkas is the path, and palas is the fruit. As a, fact, as a matter of fact, the seven bhujangas cannot take place without the practice of the four satipatthanas. So you cannot become, be enlightened without that. When a yogi practices satipatthanas, he will achieve, first of all, mental concentration. When it becomes sufficiently strong, he will achieve uh, stage by stage third. Uh, 13 vipassana jnanas, insights, which will enable him to perceive the true nature of mind and body before he achieves the makas. Both jangas are the factors of enlightenment which one must have while he is passing through these 13 vipassana jnanas. Sati means mindfulness, dhamma vichaya means mindfulness of nama, mind, and rupa, body, and their appearance and disappearance. Virya means diligence, and piti means emotion of joy. Pasadi means composure, and samadhi means concentration, and upika means equanimity. So there you have them. Briefly speaking, in the course of the practice of the Satipatthanas, if one knows he has the bojangas, then he has them and knows he does not have them and then they disappear and if he knows he has them when he has them and why he does not have them when he does when he has lost them he is deemed to be a person who is endowed with these seven factors of enlightenment and the buddha taught that such a person is one who will pass through the vipassana jnanas and achieve the makkha speedily okay four minutes left we've got a little bit of text uh, bhikkhus, asawas, and other destructive and burning defilements may arise in the bhikkhu who does not cultivate the seven factors of enlightenment. And those asawas and other destructive burning defilements does not arise in the bhikkhu who cultivates, who cultivates them with proper reflection. Bhikkhus, these are called asawas that are to be removed through cultivation. And the last uh, little paragraph here because if a bhikkhu has removed through vision the asuas that should be removed through vision has removed through restraint the asuas that should be removed through restraint has removed 
through proper use of requisites, the asawas, that should be removed through proper use of requisites. As removed through forbearance, the asawas that should be removed through forbearance. As removed through avoidance, the asawas which should be removed through avoidance. As removed through rejection, the asawas that should be removed through rejection. Has removed the has removed through cultivation the asawas that should be removed through cultivation. Then he is said to be one who abides in the restraint of all asawas. He has cut off craving, shaken off feathers, and having become fully aware of the nature of self conceit, he has made an end of dukkha. And we just have one last footnote. Self-conceit, mana. And the last line says, Thus the Bhakawa said, Delighted the bhikkhus rejoiced at the words of the Bhakawa. Piti, piti, and sadhu. Sadhu. And sadhu. And may you find true peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. And may everyone around you, by your virtue as well, obtain some, even just a little bit of happiness, or a lot, very much happiness, but just even a little bit of happiness by your own effort in taking the time and attention to be listening to me reading the Dhamma. And if you have any questions about this text, Make sure to put them below and I will answer them in the comments. And below you will find the texts and part one to this video. And I think I should go and meditate for the last minute of this video. And so, thank you so much for listening and may you be well, happy and peaceful in this life and in the next life. Hereby. And I'm gonna go and meditate, and maybe you want to join me to go ahead.